Welcome, everybody. My name is Sue Lindsay. I am a naturopath, herbalist, and nutritionist based in Sydney. I'm part of the Beaches Healing Collective. I offer naturopathic sessions from the Beaches Healing Space in Mona Vale, and I practice in Mulara and online. I also have a very long history of teaching. I lecture at university level in naturopathic degrees, and I'm really happy to be here with you this month for this tiny lecture and some other healing resources for you. This presentation is Introduction to Your Inbuilt Love Chemistry. I hope you love it. Let's get started. This lecture begins with an introduction to three major love chemicals that you produce in your body every day. You'll learn what a neurochemical is. They control so many aspects of our feeling and behaviors, our appetites, mood, cognition, stress management and response, sleep, focus, memory, attraction, arousal. These are all just some of the things that our neurotransmitters regulate. Then we'll look at their location of manufacture in the body and what they're made from, which is so important because we need all of these precursor chemicals, you know, the basic building blocks to be able to make them. And we'll finish with a food guide that tells you, or a grocery guide, I suppose, which tells you which foods to eat for each of the love chemicals. By the end of this presentation, you'll be able to recognize which chemicals make you feel secure, happy and loving, which deficiency symptoms to look out for, and how to plan your next grocery shop around self-love chemistry. Before we begin talking about these chemicals, I think it's important to mention that they're just one part of a larger thinking, feeling, acting system, which goes beyond our brains and deep into our guts. Imagine a great highway of communication channels running through your body from head to toe, relaying messages from here to there, incorporating hormonal glands like your adrenal and thyroid, your immune system, your metabolic systems, and your digestive system. This is the gut-brain axis that all of us have within us. And it essentially ties together our brains to our digestive systems. So one of the key reasons why you may have a deficiency in one or more of these love chemicals may not be your brain. It might actually be your gut. And because so many of these essential chemicals are produced in our gut, we can't expect to make enough of them if our guts are unhealthy. So your inbuilt love chemicals are really neurochemicals. That's the, um, I suppose, scientific term for them. And neurochemicals are also known as neurotransmitters. They act as messengers for the nervous system and they carry chemical messages from your brain to pretty much every other system in your body. So we're talking about your organs, your muscles and your tissues, even things like your, your gut and your bowel. They regulate mood, behavior, cognition, things like memory, our focus and attention, our vigilance, our concentration, stress resilience, how, how well we handle stress that occurs every day, or perhaps we're talking more about stress that is more chronic. Our sensory ability, um, our, our sensitivity to things, our ability to feel, touch, smell, uh, sleep, hormones, and more. Neurochemicals that specifically make us feel good are really known as things like happy chemicals or happy molecules or feel good chemicals. And some of the key ones are serotonin, dopamine, endogenous opioids, GABA, and adrenaline. We're going to focus on the first three today. So we'll look at serotonin, dopamine, endogenous opioids, and what are some of the symptoms if you do happen to have a deficiency in these? You know, maybe you know it already, maybe you're about to discover it, and what can you eat to improve your synthesis of them? GABA and, and adrenaline are also important for different reasons. GABA helps us to relax, so perhaps it's more of a relax chemical and adrenaline helps us to feel elated, excited, um, but it's also got that stress component to it where we are. We use it for fight and flight. So it can be one of those hormones that pushes us over the brink as well into distress. 
These neurochemicals, although they make us feel good, they can often be deficient. And in most of my clients, there are deficiencies in serotonin, dopamine, sometimes in the opioids, and um, often in some of the other neurochemicals involved in stress management. And the way that you'll see these deficiencies showing up is if you do have chronic stress, if you feel like you don't handle stress well, if you feel that throughout various stages of your menstrual cycle, if you're a female, or if you catch a cold and your immune system goes down, or if you have a gastrointestinal disorder, that your sensitivities are higher, that your stress tolerance is poorer, um, because all of these body systems, immune, digestive, menstrual, hormonal, they are all intertwined, remember, in this great big thinking, feeling, acting system. And then we have depression, mood swings, issues, issues with sleep and maintaining sleep, whether it is onset or maintenance, uh, cognitive disorders, difficulties, learning and remembering, focus and concentration, memory, aging, uh, aging process with some neurochemicals can be accelerated not necessarily with these ones that we're looking at today, but there are others that you can maximize to slow down the aging process. Doesn't that sound good? And then we've got mood, addictions and more. So this is a love chemicals table. It shows you these three key neurochemicals that I wanted to talk about. Um, I'm gonna tell you what they do, what are the deficiency signs and perhaps even what are the toxicity signs when you have too much of them? Because it is possible with the first two to actually have too much. So the first one is serotonin. Serotonin is really the happiness molecule, the self-love neurochemical. It's responsible for regulating mood. It also helps with the control of appetite. So if there's binge eating, mood swings, and emotional eating behaviors, then serotonin is most likely to be deficient. We also have sensory perception with serotonin. And so serotonin would be involved in things like touch, perception of pain. Sometimes when you have too much, you feel, you know, you have a, a smaller tolerance to pain, those sorts of things. Now, signs that you, you would be lacking in serotonin would really come out in mood and stress response. So you're looking for low, in, low mood or flat mood, more a sense of sadness, perhaps teariness and weepiness throughout the menstrual cycle for women, if they are cycling women and just for everybody in general a feeling of flat effect the obsessive compulsive disorder can come in here as well that's also i suppose related in with the anxiety insomnia and sleep problems another one difficulty with sleep depth and waking up feeling really unrefreshed and carbohydrate cravings, um, which is such a common thing these days. Signs that you might've swung the other way though, that you may have too much serotonin. This can actually happen, particularly if you are on the drug class, SSRIs, that might ring a bell to some of you. You've taken medications for depression in the past. Some of them work on the levels of serotonin circulating in the bloodstream. So signs that you might have ended up with too much serotonin are agitation, confusion, uh, muscle twitching. So it's almost like an overstimulation of the nervous system. There's too much activity and too much provocation in the nervous system. And then for digestion, nausea, and sometimes hallucinations. I think it's un fairly unlikely that many of you would have gone to serotonin toxicity, but it's just good to know about in case you do happen to, um, you know, take a lot of medicines, even herbal medicines, so you have to really monitor what people are taking with herbal medicines for neurochemistry. And let's move on to dopamine. Dopamine is essentially the mood and motivation neurochemical. So when you get a deficiency in dopamine, you'll notice that you have not so much the, the low sadness, the low mood sadness of serotonin, but more of a lack of motivation, apathy, just a general disinterest, and because dopamine is really triggering reward-driven behaviors, there's going to be a lack of enthusiasm for things and generally poor motivation. Some of the other signs that you might be lacking in dopamine is low libido, addictions of any sort, 
Uh, so just remember that reward seeking behavior is usually tied in with addiction, addictive behaviors and restless legs. You may get too much of dopamine. However, I know that there is a lot going around about the dopamine diet, uh, which is wonderful if you happen to be deficient in dopamine, but if you happen to have more than enough or perhaps you know plenty of dopamine, don't really need to top it up, then you may actually find that it's triggering more and more of that reward-driven behavior. So it can lead to aggression and some people's schizophrenia. Uh, I just have to say that it's very unlikely that that you will you know end up with those as toxicity more li more likely than not most of us are going to be deficient in dopamine and our final love chemical is the endogenous opioids these are the ones that make us feel euphoric they also relieve our pain they are associated in part with the reward seeking behaviors but not as strongly as dopamine and they also help to regulate our appetite you can think about them as endorphins when you get an endorphin rush for instance the signs that you may not have enough are quite similar to the others. So there may be issues with mood, low mood or flat effect. There might be more stress and anxiety generally. Some addictions or addictive behaviors because of the reward seeking tendencies. But this is more notable with endogenous opioids. If you're deficient in them, you're likely to feel more antisocial. You might experience headaches. You are more likely to experience cravings for alcohol or carbohydrates which essentially are like a quick fix for the body. So the body's trying to do things to get back to balance, but there, these are quick fixes. So we want to have more sustainable ways of improving all of your love chemistry. Let's have a look at where they're made and, and, uh, and what we need to make them. Okay, so how we make love chemicals is um, there's two parts to it. So there is the fact that we do synthesize them in our bodies. We don't necessarily get them directly from our foods. So we need our foods to provide us with what are known as precursors, the original substances, the basic building blocks. We need those from our foods. But we also need any of the vitamins and minerals that help our bodies to manufacture our love chemicals. And these are vitamins and minerals. And they're known as cofactors. So they are basically working with the base building blocks to create each of these love chemicals. So first up, serotonin. We produce most of it in our guts, 95%. So with serotonin and mood, feeling well, feeling happy, self-love, we do need healthy guts for that. If we don't have healthy guts, we probably can't produce a lot of serotonin. And then we get issues with sleep and mood and so on. The basic building block for serotonin is tryptophan and tryptophan is an amino acid. It goes through various stages of metabolism to create 5-HTP. The vitamins and minerals involved in the production of serotonin are vitamin C and vitamin B. These are vitamins that we tend to utilize quite quickly. And because they're vitamins that are water soluble, we tend to flush them out in the urine. So we do want a fresh intake of these vitamins every day or every other day. The minerals involved are magnesium, iron, and zinc. So for these minerals, we need to be eating a lot of greens to get them. Sometimes we need to be eating meat as well, particularly with iron and zinc. Now, it's produced roughly half in the brain, half in the gut, but there is a difference in the quality of the dopamine. The dopamine produced in the brain is not quite as sustained as the dopamine produced in the gut. So if you can focus on getting a really healthy gut, producing very healthy dopamine, then you'll be able to produce uh, a, a stronger and more effective, efficient version of dopamine. And the one that's produced in the brain tends to be a little bit more short-lived, kind of like the quick fix scenario that we talked about before. The basic building block is tyrosine. Again, this is an amino acid. And tyrosine is used together with vitamin B and the minerals, magnesium, selenium, and iron to produce your dopamine. And for endogenous opioids, they're produced mainly in the brain through brain tissues. And the precursors are phenylalanine, which is an amino acid, and glutamine as well. And the phenylalanine and glutamine together with B12, C, and the minerals, zinc, magnesium, and iron will create your endogenous opioids. 
So one of the things that you might already have noticed is that magnesium pops up a lot, correct? Now, magnesium is so important for our neurological system, for our stress response. And this is probably the reason why most naturopaths will prescribe you some magnesium today, because the more exercise you do, the more sugar you eat, the more stressed you are, the less sleep you get, the more magnesium you burn. So most of us are requiring some magnesium top-ups. You'll also notice vitamin C, vitamin B are involved in a lot of these um, love chemical um, synthes synthesizing pathways. So we do need to get our fresh fruits and veggies, you know, to give us all of our vitamins. So that's the next thing we have to look at is, you know, how do we get these precursors and cofactors through our diet? With serotonin, some of the foods that will give you a lot of those precursors and cofactors are turkey and chicken. So you can get it from chicken as well. And from fruits, banana, kiwi, oranges, from nuts of all types, all nuts and seeds are really useful for love chemistry, particularly walnuts and um, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds are really good. Sunflower seeds good too. And in terms of the um, other foods with serotonin, cherries, green grapes come in there with the fruits, papaya, pears and pineapples, plums, strawberries, you know, and then we've got things like um, uh, some of some of your leafy green veggies. You've got your cabbages, you've got some green lettuce, onions, tomatoes. So you can maybe have a look at this list and see, okay, which of these foods do I resonate with? You know, how can I create a dish around them? And some of the herbs that are really good for serotonin to help you produce more are ashwagandha, withania, somnifera, St. John's wort, uh, lavender. You can have lavender tea or you can get a lavender cookbook and start cooking with lavender. Saffron is really good. Um, saffron often comes in supplement forms. I tend to prefer it in supplement form, but um, you could cook it in with your soups and stews if the diet, if the if the budget permits, I suppose. Um, turmeric is wonderful in food and cooking and turmeric lattes. Even um, sprinkling turmeric and salt on your roast potatoes is really, really good. And um, coffee beans. So have a coffee every now and then. And now with dopamine, dopamine, um, you, you really need the poultry. So things like your turkey and chicken are quite essential for dopamine production and your milk products. So anything that has, you know, um, Dairy in it tends to be good for dopamine and the same for endogenous opioids. Other foods that help with dopamine are things like apples. They're probably one of the most key fruits for dopamine. Avocados, um, we've got bananas, and then we've got some vegetables, things like legumes, peanuts. Uh, oats are in there as well. Um, oats will come up later too for endogenous opioids. And then some of your cooking herbs like rosemary and oregano are really good got sesame seeds and pumpkin seeds in there and some soy products. So definitely the more of the, the milky style foods and drinks. And for herbs, turmeric again, magic velvet bean, uh, Macuna pruriens is a really beautiful um, Asian herb and it's very rich in L-dopa, which is the, the precursor um, for dopamine, you know, a little bit further on from the tyrosine. And then licorice, which is herbal licorice, not sugar licorice or candy licorice it's it's the licorice root saffron and lavender and for endogenous opioids from the diet it's a little bit more limited admittedly so you've got mainly dairy and milk and soy and some of the grains particularly the gluten containing grains wheat barley rye and oats probably more important is the meditation the regular exercise laughing sexual activity you know, so the endogenous opioids are probably more likely to be sparked from the things that you do rather than the things that you eat. But still, you can you can support that process by eating these sorts of foods. And the herbs that assist, uh, rhodiola is probably one of the best herbs, rhodiola rosea. It's a lovely adaptogen and it does help, uh, in essence, with all of our brain chemistry because it locks the breakdown of that brain chemistry. Um, then we have serotonin, sorry, we have Siberian ginseng, lemon balm and thyme, which you can use in your cooking and you can make beautiful thyme oils, you know, on your bench top, put some dried thyme into your olive oil, make sure it's always topped up and it will gently flavor the oil for you. 
Uh, and so there, that's kind of like a little bit of a summary of um, the food sources. Now, I did mention before that because so many of these love chemicals are produced in our gut, it means that we need to look after our guts. I'm not going to leave you without telling you a little bit about what you can do there. So you can get a lot of the cofactors and the gut healers from your grocery shop as well. For vitamin C and magnesium particularly, there's a list of foods here that gives you a sense, okay, vitamin C, I am looking at the citrus fruits. I'm looking at the dark leafy uh, brassica veggies, things like broccoli and, and um, Brussels sprouts, but I'm also looking at white potatoes for pretty much everything. And white potatoes are really an unsung hero, even with metabolic health. Um, so we tend to think of them as hot chips, but if you don't just cook them as hot chips all the time, you can get a lot of benefit from your white potatoes. So we've got bell peppers and strawberries and tomatoes in there for vitamin C as well. And for magnesium, we have a lot of milk products. Um, admittedly, magnesium is heavier because it is a mineral. So you're looking at heavy foods like nuts, beans, milks, a little bit of chocolate, just a little bit, you know. Um, we've also got the brown rice in there and the salmon and with um, and some meat as well for magnesium. Now with gut healers, make sure you've got some of these in the diet to assist with your gut health and your gut production of these love chemicals. Chia seeds are wonderful. Put a tablespoon in a glass of water, leave it for 15 to 30 minutes to swell up and then you drink it. Aloe vera juice is wonderful as well. So we want to heal the gut so that it's able to carry out its love chemistry production more efficiently. Psyllium husks are really good because they cleanse the gut and they're mucilaginous. So when they swell up in the water that you're mixing them in, it creates this very soothing healing juice that comes down through the digestive system. But you must, must, must drink enough water if you're having psyllium husks, otherwise they will constipate you. So you need to be having your 1.5 to 2 liters of water a day. Turmeric is beautiful for gut healing and you can cook it, you can drink it. Um, you can put two slices of fresh turmeric in water in the morning, warm water that will boost your Agni. In Ayurveda, this is your um, digestive power. And then we've got pre and probiotics, which can be prescribed by naturopath like myself, because believe it or not, it's a whole science, probiotics, so many different types out there. You want to get the one that's going to work best for you. And the last thing I want to show you is a little bit of a grocery plan. So the next time you go to the supermarket or the grocery store to get your regular foods for the week, think about it as divided up in this way. So you'll walk in, hopefully you'll be near the produce section where you've got all your fruits and veggies. So this is over on the left here with your citrus fruits, for vitamin C, serotonin, all the fruits help with everything basically, but you know, serotonin and dopamine particularly and green leafy veg veggies will give you lots of magnesium as well. Then you head up to the bakery where you get your favorite breads or perhaps you're gluten-free. That's okay. You don't have to do this. Um, but if you're not, you can go for some of the wheat, barley, rye sort of breads, really nicely made, hopefully freshly baked. And you can get nuts usually from this area as well. So nuts and nut butter will help with your serotonin and magnesium. Then you can head on down to the dairy and buy some dairy products if that's okay for you. If you're dairy free, obviously go for soy or something else. But dairy will help you with your dopamine and opioids. Then you go to your chicken um, and turkey in the poultry section. Perhaps you want to get more meats, build up your magnesium. So you might go for red meat there. And then you might head to the fish or seafood section to boost your dopamine. You might find uh, in the, the um, supplement section or the pharmacy section, you can get a nice probiotic. If you can't, um, you can always come and see me for a consultation and we can do, you know, heaps and heaps of really great stuff for your health. But if you just wanted a starting point, maybe get yourself a nice natural yogurt, drink dandelion root tea. Uh, it's a lovely prebiotic and eat a high fiber diet. So that's your beginning point. And then you might want to grab a coffee or turmeric latte to boost your serotonin and dopamine on the way out. You'll notice that in the center of the supermarket, usually the center three aisles are pretty much a no-go zone. <laughs> so just don't even enter. But, uh, you know, sometimes we have to, if you've got a party to throw or something like that. But generally the carbs, fats, and sodas are the things that are going to 
over trigger your dopamine pathways. They're going to increase the breakdown of your neurochemicals. And that's why they're usually a no-go zone. But if you head into the health food section, you'll see that you've got your seeds in there. Maybe you've got some nice green powders or beetroot powders and things like that. All of those foods are lovely to include to heal your guts and also to help you to produce good gut lining, good gut health. So you can make all of these wonderful love chemicals. And of course, you can get your chia seeds from there, your psyllium husks, aloe vera juice and those sorts of things. So I hope that you enjoyed the presentation, everybody. So nice to spend this time with you. Thank you for listening. Have a beautiful day. And um, don't forget to check out some of the other resources this month on the Self Love Circle. Mm -hmm.